Now, as millions of South Africans showcase the country's diverse cultures and traditions on Heritage Day, Khoisan groups are calling for more recognition of their languages. Sign language was recently added as South Africa's 12th official language, but there are others still hoping to be included. I'm now joined by linguist Dr. Lorato Mukwena, who is also senior lecturer from UNISA. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. We do appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. And happy Heritage Day. Thank you. <laughs> You too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's just start off with mm -hmm. how one defines one's heritage. Right. And I'll ask you in the context of, I'm, I come from a house with one culture, one heritage, which is Hellenic, Greek, yeah. but others don't. Others yeah. come from uh, a different, uh, mm -hmm. a mother that comes from a different area or mm -hmm. culture and a father with a different uh, yeah, heritage yeah. and culture. What actually defines a heritage and a culture? I guess this is the tricky part about what we mean when we talk about heritage and I guess this is where I really take a different view where on Heritage Day where you find most people going on about wearing traditional attire and speaking their languages I think at some point South Africa needs to ponder about exactly what you're asking me what does it mean to cele celebrate heritage what is heritage? I mean, what is South Africa's heritage, right? And so if we think about heritage then in terms of language, um, I'll give you an example. Um, so it's, it's well documented in literature that the Kosa and Zulu people, right, actually, whose languages are really the same, right? Um, they defined as speaking different languages only because there was a rivalry between the missionaries that were working with these two groups. So that in terms of South Africa, when we speak of heritage pertaining language, aren't we really just, and if you think about it then, right, so we had what South Africa would like to call 11 languages, and now we have 12. Mm. The act of doing that, of counting languages, is called enumeration. So you count languages. That is not an African thing to do. Actually, it was when the Re Europeans came when we started counting languages. Africans were never in the habit of counting languages. And so what happened then when we got the constitution, this very Western culture was replicated. And now we have 12 countable languages, but countless others that are not really accounted for. So really, when we speak of heritage, specifically in terms of language, I think as South Africans, I would like us to get to a point where we start pondering on how we think of language and where we took the type of thinking that we do about languages from, because it is not something that we had. We never had, we never counted languages, we just spoke for communication so that we can get along. And because the Europeans came and they wanted to govern us, they had to break down our languages into numbers. And when we unfortunately got the constitution, we did exactly the same thing. We just replicated something that we never really should have. But then that begs the question: yes. Are you? Are you? Uh, is your heritage based on the language that mm -hmm. you can speak? Because I mean, you're speaking about Zulus and Kwasas yeah. and yeah. how that was broken up because of that rivalry. Yeah. Um, so are you defined in your view and being a linguist and understanding the difference in languages yeah. and, and, and that role that it plays? Are you, is your culture defined by the language that you can speak? That's a brilliant question. And for the longest of time in South Africa, there has been a link between language and who you are, identity, right? So language has been an identity marker. But it's kind of tricky when you are like me and you speak a couple of languages that are not really associated with the identity. For example, I am of a Soto father and a Sichuana mother, right? But because I'm from the Northern Cape, I was schooled in Afrikaans. So whenever people see me, they're like, why do you speak Afrikaans? And, so and well, I'm like, yeah. why not? <laughs> and they're like, you're black. And I'm like, what does me being black have to do with me speaking Afrikaans? So unfortunately in South Africa, or fortunately because look, we will, never, we will never run away from the fact that it's a good thing for there to be a link between language and identity. However, when it comes to the point where it starts dividing us, where we start wondering about who is in the in-group and the out-group based on which language they speak, then we are running into trouble. Mm. I want to yeah. speak about the languages that should be included. Sure. We know, we know that the Khoisan group has always felt excluded, yeah. uh, been crying out for yeah. um, inclusion. Yeah. Um, 
how important is it for this country to include those languages that have been left out? It's important, but we can't include the languages and never mind the people. Mm. It doesn't make sense. We can't run and be like, let's include the languages and then they will be recognized. How many of our indigenous South African languages are included in the constitution, but still receive minimal attention. So I think with the, with the Koi and the Sun groups, what we need to do is go back to the people. Do people actually know where those groups stay in South Africa? Like, do people know where Platfontein is and what Platfontein is? Most of us be like, I'm not really sure. So instead of running to the languages, which are important, no doubt, can we start with the people? Where are they? How do they feel about their languages? Do they speak their languages? What do they speak? Have they been forced to assimilate? Important questions before we even run to the issue of let's include their languages mm -hmm. just as a dress up for inclusivity. Mm. It's interesting. I'm just thinking back to your point where you said yeah. people look at you and they you can speak Afrikaans and people are like, but how? Because you're yeah. black. And it's when people look at me, they're like, yeah. but why can't you speak Afrikaans? You're white. And I'm like, but just because yeah. you're white doesn't mean you can speak Afrikaans. Yeah. Um, and I want to speak about that mm -hmm. issue of mother tongue yeah. and the importance of preserving it. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're in agreement of that. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me, for example, I'm so grateful that yeah. my mother ensured that I could speak fluent Greek yeah. and preserving that mother tongue. Yeah. Um, do you think that we do that here in South Africa? Do you think we should be doing that? I think we should. I think every child should know because you see the beauty of having a mother tongue, right, is notwithstanding all the arguments linguists will make about whether it should be called mother tongue or not. But the practicality is that there's nuances in your mother tongue and lessons in your mother tongue that can't be shared in, a, in another language. So we should. South Africa is doing it. But I just don't know to which extent we actually have moved from it just being about be proud where we need to move towards language as a tool, where we use it in education, where we use it in technology, so that we move away from this protection of South African indigenous languages as just pride, something we happen to just take out on Heritage Day and be like, oh my God, look, we have 11, 12 languages and put them back, where every day they form part of our technology. They form part of what we do in everyday life so that they are not always on the outskirts of English and Afrikaans. But also taking cognizance of the yes. fact that you should um, acknowledge yeah. and be aware of the other languages. Yes. Just very quickly, if you can touch on that, sure. that as much as we have mother tongues mm -hmm. and we relate much better in our mother tongues, yeah. we have 12 official languages yes. in this country and I'm sure a lot of them can't speak. A lot, yeah, yeah. A lot of people can't speak more than two or three of those languages. Yeah. Look, I think the matter, the fact of the matter is if you stay in South Africa, you're going to need to know at least more than two languages or more than what we consider your mother tongue, right? So, for example, I just started at UNISA and I came there and really I had to grapple with so many other languages and I had to catch up. I had to start asking friends and family, hey, what does that mean? So I can be inclusive and so that a part of me does not always feel as if, oh my God, no, I don't know what's happening. I must stay away. And this is the beauty, I think, of being South African yeah. where you want to know mm -hmm. and where you need to know because we work in diverse cultures. We have diverse families. People don't always marry people who speak the same languages with them. And up until we get to a point where we understand that um, we need to move away from language, sometimes unfortunately being a, a tool of division sometimes, where you're like, no, I'm Zulu and I'm close and I'm this and I'm that. I don't want to speak to you. Where we get to a point where can we find, com you know, in, in linguistics they call it language that are mutually mm -hmm. intelligible. Where we get to a point where we know, you know we can move around these languages yeah. and not always just stick to I am this and you are that. Mm, certainly. Yes. Thank you so much for your insights. Maybe I should say in Afrikaans, bye, thank you for your day. Yes, bye, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. That was linguist Dr. Uh, Lorato Mokwena, who is a senior lecturer and linguist uh, from UNISA.